Hello everybody, Dr. Sampurna Ghosh here, ENT consultant in Mycover Hospital. Today I am going to talk about snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. So why we need to be treated about this? Why can't people just live with it? Uh, yes, there are many people who tell me that isn't it normal for all the male people after some time that they will snore? It's not normal. First of all, you have to put this in your brain that it is something wrong why a person while breathing at night is making sound the sound has some source where from it, it is coming we need to know that so let us start from the very basic that you need to understand how the air ultimately enters through nose to reach the lungs so if you see this picture kind of a cross section of the head the air enters through the nose and then it goes behind the palate this is the palate uvula or small tongue people know like that and then it comes in the mouth cavity. In mouth cavity, what is there in front? In front is the back of the tongue and on both sides there are two tonsils and this is the back wall of the throat. Now after traversing this much, the air will enter into ultimately the actual airway tube. This is the vocal cord, we phone it from here and then it reaches into the lungs. So from here to here, it is called upper airway. There must be some kind of obstruction in the upper airway which makes all these tissues to vibrate and that vibration is the snoring sound which comes from. Now if it is not treated, what will happen? When there is obstruction chronically for many years, your oxygen saturation can come down at night. Uh, now because the pandemic time people have known a lot about uh, saturation I guess everybody now have a pulse oximeter and you know that if your saturation is below 96 95 something is concerning and you are coming to hospital and pulmonologist but do you know that the person who is snoring heavily for years together every night their saturation is falling down below 95 so the person who is suffering from obstructive sleep apnea it sometimes even goes up to 80 85 but no one knows. So each night you are going through a dangerous situation where you are putting your own heart and brain in tremendous pressure to do overwork, to uh, send the less amount of oxygen to each uh, tissue and cell of your body. That is why it needs to be treated. Now the next question which naturally comes to a person who snores is, how do you know whether your snoring is just a normal snoring or it is obstructive sleep apnea which is to be taken a little more seriously? So there are certain uh, questions which I normally ask and which really helps me to understand that in which category you are, you are uh, into. Few questions are sleep related and few are daytime symptom related. So the sleep related questions will be like do you get some pause in between the snoring? You may notice yourself or your partner can say that for a moment, for a few seconds, you are not breathing. This is called apnea, witnessed apnea. If you have that, probably you have OSA. The second question is, how is the quality of sleep? Do, are you a person like you go to bed at 10 and directly get up at 6 and you are happy with your quality of sleep? If so, the chance of OSA is less. Usually, OSA people will have disturbed sleep fragmented sleep, unknowingly or knowingly they get up multiple times and morning when they wake up they don't feel fresh. Whatever long time they spend in their bed still they feel they are tired, they are dull. Uh, there are certain more features like sometimes the OSA people feel very dry in the throat, sometimes they get morning headache, some people feel excessive uh, hot or excessively cold during the sleeping time and some people even get a lot of nightmares. Coming to the second part, what are the daytime or related symptoms of OSA? Most OSA people suffer from excessive daytime sleepiness. So don't think if you see somebody uh, like dozing while in the meeting or reading a newspaper and started dozing or slept in the flight or sleeping in the back of the cab that they are lazy there may be something in the background of that. This person, the same person was very energetic a few years before and after the severe snoring started, they look so lazy. So where is the problem? The problem is 
undiagnosed obstructive sleep apnea. They don't get adequate oxygen, so their brain feels tired. The effect of the nighttime hypoxia and carbon dioxide accumulation will manifest in the daytime in this way. Till now, we have discussed about what is snoring, what is obstructive sleep apnea, why it needs to be treated, and how the person himself or herself can suspect that his or her snoring is not the good one which needs to be treated. Now coming to the point that how do you diagnose? As a doctor, I can't just diagnose on basis of uh, the clinical symptoms or what the person's partner is describing. I need some objective evaluation to say whether you have OSA or not. Like we do blood test, we do COVID test. Similarly, for snoring and sleep apnea, there is a very interesting test which is called polysomnography or in simple form it is called the sleep study. There are many varieties of it. I will just uh, tell you something a little simplified for the sake of understanding that there are certain machines which probes like one probe will be here, some will be like ECG leads or some probe may be in your forehead like EG lead. There may be a belt. Uh, with all these uh, light attachments, you just have to sleep and these probes will be attached to the sleep study machine. One night sleep and the next day morning, the technician will generate the report from this sleep study machine. There are multiple parameters in this that throughout the night, how did you sleep? Uh, did you sleep continuously or was there fragmentation in between? Have you undergone all the stages of sleep or not? Have you reached the deep and peaceful part of the sleep or not? The other parameters are oxygen saturation level. In this six hours or seven hours, did you maintain 90 to 100% or you are following hypoxia? If you have hypoxia, till what level it came down? Did it come down to 80? Did it come down to 70? So this basically it comes like a file. The report when it comes to a doctor, it's not one page, it's a file which has starting from the pulse rate to oxygen saturation, even your posture, in which posture you prefer to sleep most of the night. So seeing this is gives us a full picture about your uh, pattern of sleep and we can diagnose not only sleep apnea but we can also diagnose other kind of sleep disorder like periodic limb movement or central sleep apnea. So sleep study is the most vital test for diagnosing snoring or obstructive sleep apnea. Now the second question is if you are diagnosed with OSA what is the treatment protocol? Simple thing first like whether simple snoring or OSA, the commonest cause is mostly in this time is obesity. So you will notice like if you were having a nice good BMI before in your college days and you were not snoring but maybe now because of work from home or because of sedentary lifestyle, if your BMI has increased, then you start snoring. So many times I have seen that there is no other cross reason. The ENT parts are clear um, and there is uh, no thyroid disease, nothing else but it is the overweight or obesity issue. So if you have that, um, just controlling the obesity or overweight part itself can treat the snoring in many many cases. Uh, coming to the other factor, the you can ask me like uh, don't you see thin person snoring yes we have a lot of thin patients who have severe severe obstructive sleep apnea but in that case there will be some uh, definite organic problem either in the nose or in the throat there may be nasal polyps there may be very big tonsillarinoid or sometimes the face the facial skeleton the bony architecture of the face is not developed well there are terms called retrognathia like a small narrow chin or small and flat maxilla so the face is kind of flat and that is the reason the airway is narrow and they also snore loudly now the naturally uh, the next question comes that is there any treatment yes there are many many modalities of treatment that day is gone like 20 25 years back there were not many treatment options for osa 
At one point of time, the only answer was CPAP machine. The CPAP invention of CPAP itself is a historic event that uh, the doctors or the scientists could give at least some solution for this snoring patient. But the CPAP machine has a lot of pros and cons. So it will have some kind of mask with a tube, long tube attached to an electronic device and it pushes air. CPAP means continuous positive airway pressure. So it pushes air into your airway. Whenever the airway is trying to collapse, it kind of blow it up. So the ultimate result is you stop snoring, your oxygen saturation increases and you feel much better. But is it very comfortable? Yeah, that's a very, very practical question. Now, uh, truly speaking, it is not very easy or comfortable for many, many patients. Once you accept it and you are used to it, it is really good, nothing like it. But many people feel suffocated with that huge mask. They feel dryness in the throat. Or the young people, like those who are in their 30s or 40s, they may not like it. Why will they sleep with a machine? Obviously, it's not a very uh, fancy thing to sleep every night with a machine. So what is the solution for them? Yes, for them, there are uh, some dental appliances which they can apply and sleep and there are certain surgical options as well. So the surgery is done sometimes only by the dentist surgeon who is specially trained to treat OSA patients. Sometimes we make a team with ENT and maxillofacial surgeon as well. Now, what is the success rate? The success rate and the success criteria all depends on the individual patient. So suppose somebody has a very, very high uh, level of obstructive sleep apnea and from there, if we can reduce the snoring 70 to 80 percent by doing a surgery, this is called successful. If not, even if the snoring is not coming to zero levels, 80 percent reduction, 70 percent reduction in these patients are also successful. Because the ultimate aim is not to make you silent. The ultimate aim is to improve your oxygenation in the blood level. As soon as you come out from the hypoxia effect, your overall quality of life improves. You feel better in the daytime and your quality of sleep becomes so peaceful and it's good for your overall health.